we recall the days when sluice boxes were running in our main street, and those who presumed to put buildings on mining ground without arranging with the mining owner would find a mining shaft at his front door some bright morning. Sundays were distinguished from other days by being the noisiest and busiest days in town. Gambling and dance houses had the heaviest patronage on this off day for the miners. Rough and demoralizing as were those days, we can but linger over their memories with a shade of regret that we shall never see their like again. We well remember in our early days that it was generally believed that nothing could be grown on such soil as most of that in Montana. And the first ones to plant potatoes worth 25 cents a pound were considered foolhardy. It proved soon that our soil and climate were the best in the world for potatoes and but little less adapted to most other vegetables. It was true for several years after the first rush of gold seekers came to Montana that no one could be found who expected to live and die here or have a permanent home so far away from God's country. Bad luck and heavy losses might keep one here longer than he expected, but there was always a reserve expectation of going back home to stay and greet the girl he left behind him. The coming of railroads was a fruitful theme of speculation in early days, and when the Union Pacific was completed as near as Kareen, nearest we should ever come to seeing a railroad to Montana. To get a railroad within 450 miles and have a daily line of coaches was as great a wonder and cause of rejoicing in its day as when we greeted the advance of the railroad to our city. We remember well the first railroad meeting ever held in Helena. It was in Captain Parkinson's old opera house on the Upper Main Street. We remember some of the speeches made and how ready many of our citizens were to pledge half of their worldly wealth to the enterprise. They were not worth much then as now. There were schemes of railroads to Corrine, to Fort Benton, and very forlorn mention a possibility of the Northern Pacific coming. There were schemes also of taking the improvement of the Missouri out of the Lagarde in the hands of the government and stocking it with a continuous line of steamboat and barges. There was a species of opiate in these wild daydreams, and many of our staid and sober-minded people were ready to vote subsidies by the million to help the poor northern Pacific to get on its legs. Nobody now would think of giving a subsidy for a railroad, and we think it is rather dull day. It does not witness the scheme of some new railroad. As things are going, some will begin soon to think of the legislation to keep any more railroads out. It will not be those who have done the most coyotes and jerky riding. We say, let them come and give them welcome. Car riding is cheap as five cents a mile, compared with staging at 15 cents, with the involuntary privilege of walking up every hill simply because passengers could walk and the baggage couldn't. Some of these things look better in retrospect than they did in perpetual prospect. We have never seen the day when we did not want to see railroads, permanent, comfortable homes, and statehood for Montana. We have seen all and rejoice.